Attention all F1 fans! Red Bull shocked the Formula 1 world when they announced that Daniel Ricciardo would be replacing Nick de Vries mid-season at the AlphaTauri team. It is an exciting move, especially with Ricciardo being back on the grid. So it seems like a good time to take a look at some of the biggest mid-season moves in Formula 1 history. Strap in as we take a look at the biggest mid-season moves by F1 drivers. Red Bull have always been happy to make a change when things aren't working out. They are by far the most ruthless team in the sport, with Nick de Vries sacking certainly not the first time that Red Bull have made an in-season switch with their sister team. Back in 2019, Ricardo's original replacement Pierre Gasly was struggling in the Red Bull car. While Max Verstappen was constantly in the top four and even claiming race wins, Pierre was struggling to break into that top five and was getting nowhere near his teammate. Pierre was making mistakes that the Red Bull team could not afford. Meanwhile, rookie Alex Albon was impressing with Alpha Tauri, punching far above the car's potential. So during the summer break, Red Bull decided to switch the two drivers. Albon would drive in the Red Bull for the rest of the season, while Gasly would go back to the Alpha Tauri seat. Albon was more consistent throughout the rest of the season than Pierre had been, but it was a brutal move for Gasly, and so there was no surprise he left for Alpine at the start of this season. This is also not the first time that Red Bull have switched their drivers over mid-season. It was only a matter of time until Max Verstappen was in the Red Bull seat. He was incredibly impressive in his first season of the sport, with two fourth-place finishes in the Toro Rosso car. Verstappen massively outperformed his teammate at the time Carlos Sainz, but there was still uncertainty as to whether Red Bull would trust Verstappen with their fastest car. For 2016, it looked like Red Bull would persevere with Ricardo and Russian Daniel Kvyat in their car. But Kvyat struggled in the first few races of the season and crashed out of his home race after contact with Sebastian Vettel. So after just four races of the season, Red Bull decided to promote the 18-year-old into the Red Bull seat. It was one of those moves that looked genius immediately. Verstappen's first race in the Red Bull car was the infamous 2016 Spanish Grand Prix, where both Mercedes cars collided on the first lap. Verstappen was able to brilliantly take advantage of that collision, as he would win on his Red Bull debut. With Max picking up six more podiums in that 2016 season, it was certainly a good move from Red Bull to promote him that quickly. The move was not quite as successful for Kvyat or Toro Rosso. The Russian driver collected just three points finishes across the season, despite Carlos Sainz being able to pick up eight points finishes, including finishing sick three times. Despite Kvyat's struggles, I think it is a move Red Bull will have been very pleased with. It's also not the first time we've seen a team take a gamble on a young prospect mid-season, who turns out to be a world champion. Michael Schumacher was very much seen as an exciting prospect before he made his debut with Formula 1. There was not a clear path for the German to get into the sport, until one opened up at Jordan. Schumacher had one race to show his talent, and he put his Jordan car in seventh, massively outperforming the other Jordan car. It caught the attention of a lot of different teams, including Benetton, who wanted him in the car straight away. Well, Benetton boss Flavio Briatore decided the best way to get Schumacher into his car is by paying off the current driver, Roberto Moreno, despite Moreno finishing fourth in Belgium. Benetton secured Schumacher before some of the bigger teams in the sport got their hands on him. It was a great move from Benetton, with Schumacher getting three points finishes with his new team before securing a win in 1992 in Spa. Benetton were also able to get Schumacher away from Jordan, who were desperately trying to sign the German after he impressed in their car. But Jordan were able to make a mid-season move just under a decade later. Heinz Harold Frentzen might not be a name familiar to you or me, but he was a driver that Jordan put a lot of faith into in 1999, as he was coming off the back of a terrible season with Williams the prior year. Well, Franson actually picked up two race victories for Jordan in 1999, but he was very inconsistent in the two years following that. 2001 was a particularly poor start for the German, as he had four retirements in a row before missing out on points in back-to-back -back races. Franson and the team decided to part ways just before the German Grand Prix, in what looked like a joint decision. What surprised most F1 fans is who the team went with as his replacement. To partner Jano Trulli for the rest of the season, they chose former Ferrari and Benetton driver Jean Alisi. The Frenchman was good, but certainly not great for Jordan, finishing sixth in his second race with the team at Spa. But he was removed for Takuma Sato for the 2002 season. 
Frensen, on the other hand, originally joined the Frost team before moving to Arrows in 2002, before they ended up going into administration during the season. Frensen finished his career with Sauber, even picking up a podium for the team while he was driving alongside Nick Heidfeld. It was one of those moves where, really, no one won. While there have been quite a few incredibly successful British drivers, Jolian Palmer was not one of those drivers who had a brilliant time in Formula 1. In 2014, Palmer won GP2 ahead of future Formula 1 drivers like Pierre Gasly, Nicholas Latifi and Stoffel van Dorn. He had one season as a test driver for Lotus F1 before finally getting his seat in the sport with Renault. Palmer was outperformed by his teammate Kevin Magnussen in 2016, and a year later he was again outperformed by Nico Hülkenberg. Palmer had finished 6th in Singapore, but he was moved out of the team after finishing 12th in Japan. Renault had been keeping their eye on Toro Rosso driver Carlos Sainz, who had been impressing massively over the previous few years. Sainz had planned to be brought in to replace Palmer at the start of the 2018 season, but that move was brought forward to the 2017 US Grand Prix. Palmer's form meant that Sainz was brought in early, and Brendan Hartley got a promotion to Toro Rosso. The British driver didn't get another chance in the sport and moved into a media career pretty quickly after being moved on from Renault. It was a successful move for the French side, and it helped Sainz end up with McLaren, where he showed that he could be one of the fastest drivers on the grid. It's pretty crazy to see how different two drivers' careers go after one simple move by a team. While the team quite often chooses when to move on from drivers, there have been times where teams have had no choice but to make a mid-season change. Japanese team Super Aguri was one of the teams that had to make a change just four races into the season. They had chosen inexperienced Japanese driver Yuji Aida to drive for them despite him being 31 and having very little European racing experience. But just four races into the season, Aida ended up losing his super license, which allowed him to drive in the sport. In the European Grand Prix, Ida was involved in a crash with Christian Albers that ended up with Albers' car being upside down. Throughout those first few races, Ida was just not able to get any control of the car, and his lack of experience really showed. Ida only finishes one of those first four races, and he never got back into the sport. Ida is seen as one of the worst drivers in the sport's history, but he was really just incredibly unlucky with being put into the seat with so little experience. We've already seen Daniel Ricciardo shock the Formula 1 world with his return to sport, but maybe there's another move that could happen. At the moment, it seems unlikely for any team to make a move in the summer break. Teammates who are massively underperforming their partners are the ones usually most likely to be dropped mid-season. Logan Sargent is one of the drivers who has struggled compared to his teammate, but considering the Williams car has been generally uncompetitive and Sargent brings in a huge amount of money for the team through commercial revenue, it seems unlikely that they will move on from him anytime soon. The biggest difference in teammate performance is probably between the Aston Martin teammates. Lance Stroll has struggled to get the Aston Martin near the podium, while Fernando Alonso has been the best driver on the grid not in a Red Bull car this season. If this was any other team, it would not be surprising for Stroll to be moved on mid-season. But the issue is that it's going to take a lot for Lawrence Stroll to sack his own son, and so expect Lance to stay with Aston Martin for the rest of the season. There are no more obvious candidates outside of Stroll and Sargent. It generally seems unlikely any more mid-season driver moves will take place. But who knows, F1 can be a pretty unpredictable world at any time. There could even be a driver move mid-season that no one sees coming. But who do you think could be the next mid-season driver move? And what do you think is the biggest mid-season driver move in this video? Why not put your thoughts in the comments down below? While you're down there, why not hit the like button and subscribe? Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.